If you've ever done the tourist trip through New York City, you've definitely been to Grand Central Station, which is actually called Grand Central Terminal. But you might not have noticed the strange intersection between the mural on the ceiling of this beautiful train station and the Cold War, which also has a bit of a space twist. So that's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. On February 2nd of 1913, Grand Central Terminal finally opened its doors. After 10 years of construction and a price tag of about $2 billion by today's standards, it was finally open for public use. The rationale behind building the new station was actually to make train travel safer for passengers. Trains in the early 20th century produced a lot of soot and smoke, so much so that one driver in 1902 was actually blinded and hit another train. The accident killed 15 people and raised some major concerns about passenger safety. The accident led to a ruling that steam engines were prohibited from operating in the city. The Vanderbilt family then designed Grand Central to take advantage of electricity and not steam. The station was also built with its trains operating entirely underground, freeing up airspace in the city and really planting the seed for the Manhattan that we know today. At midnight the day that it opened, the first passengers boarded trains leaving Grand Central Terminal, and since then it has become a hub for train travelers. Daily, there are more than 750,000 people who pass through that station, which is more than the JFK airport sees on a day. And while the numbers haven't always been that high, Grand Central has always been a massive hub of activity in the city. And so it's not surprising that the US government leveraged all of the eyes passing through that building for a little bit of positive PR in the 1950s. In an attempt to allay fears of Soviet missiles, the US government erected a redstone rocket in the main concourse of Grand Central Terminal. As a bit of a shout out to the International Geophysical Year, the rocket was brought in on July 7th of 1957. The two main components were taken off flat cars at 6 o'clock in the morning and moved into the concourse through the gate to track 16 by around 9 o'clock in the morning. It was the only gate large enough to actually allow the missile passage. The redstone was then assembled in the concourse and hoisted into an erect position on its 5 foot tall launching platform. Now there's an odd little tidbit associated with this story. The myth goes, basically, that somebody forgot to bring a tape measure, and that when the rocket was popped upright, its tip on the nose actually pierced a hole in the ceiling. Well, that's not true. Not by a long shot, quite literally. The ceiling in the main concourse is about 275 feet high, and the redstone variant that was on display in the station stood around 63 feet. The hole in the ceiling is indeed real, but it wasn't made by the rocket piercing it when it was erected. Nope, that hole was where a guide wire was anchored to help keep the rocket upright. The redstone was on display in Grand Central for three weeks, allowing passengers to see it on their daily commute and feel maybe a little bit better about America's chances in the growing Cold War with the Soviet Union. And you can still see the hole today. The mural on the ceiling of Grand Central's main concourse is a backwards view of the zodiac. It's meant to be what you would see if you were in the heavens looking down at the Earth. Right around the constellation Pisces, you can see a very distinct black dot. That is the hole left by the guide wire that kept the redstone upright for three weeks in 1957. I thought I had a picture of it because I did see it last time I was in New York, but turns out I didn't take a picture of it. So if you do go to New York or are in New York and pass through that station, take a second to check it out because it's kind of a neat little bit of history that you wouldn't even know existed. So has anybody out there seen the hole, been aware of it, gone on a pilgrimage to see that weird little intersection of Cold War, New York history, and space? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and your thoughts on the decision to actually put a missile in Grand Central Terminal as a way to alleviate fears. Seems like a weird move to me, but I will admit and acknowledge that I am very, very far removed from the Cold War. And of course, in the comments also leave me any questions you have regarding general space and ideas you would like to see covered in future episodes. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram for daily vintage space content and with new videos going up right here every single week, subscribe so you never miss an episode.